Hi all, um, just wanted to share with you a discovery, uh, one of the uh, players at Gunmade, uh, which is Grim Up North, for any of you, uh, Up North, for any of you not familiar, uh, here in the UK. Um, I'm sure many of you have seen the, uh, the Dominator, I'm sorry for this awkward camera angle, um, but it's got these two removable parts on the front, that one there, and this top one has a latch behind it, and I've also glued it, so I'm going to take that in a bit. Um, but what he found was that in a local, um, I don't know what you describe it as, it, it's uh, it's like a, I wouldn't say a supermarket, it, home good, it, 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 well it doesn't really matter, it, for those in the UK, it, it's well kept, uh, these tiny little torches, which incidentally are a perfect fit for both this and the worker vector kit, I believe. Um, so the young man in question, uh, one Bradley King, uh, he's got the vector kit and it looked absolutely perfect yesterday. Um, to the point that I've, I've driven down to the shops today, today's a Sunday, um, just to buy, I bought three of these torches to have a mess with. I um, mean, obviously they're a clicky on, clicky off. Now, in the the vector kit that Bradley's got, it works perfectly because it's on a strife. You push that on, and then he just turns the front, and then just presses it from the back. Brilliant. With the Dominator, obviously, well, we've got a flywheel cage in the way, and we've got no way of, of clicking that on and off. Um, so, I have picked one up. Um, there's some interesting... It was actually a lot easier to modify than I thought it would be, he says, as he can't get the battery out. Uh, I'll take it out. So you've got the wee battery holder, like so. Uh, that's just a spacer, and then the clicky thing on on the back. Um, now, obviously, I want to get rid of that. So on this one, I've taken the batteries out and put them in backwards in the holder, um, just to add a bit of insulation here. I've then taken the the end part and completely drilled the innards out uh, pulled this rubber piece out to save you know just a little noise and I pushed the wire through and then the spring that was already in there as well I've, I've soldered that onto the end of the wire so pulling the rubber bit back through and um, as long as I can keep this middle piece aligned which is a problem at the minute but the glue gun's heating I can uh, I can turn the torch on and off like that. So what I'm planning on doing is running the this is the keyring holder off of uh, this bit. Look, so I'm going to run the neutral cable, neutral cable, uh, probably up for the bottom, and then solder it in at the top. So I've got two wires coming out, and then the plan is to run a, a momentary switch somewhere down here, I think. Just drill through there probably. Um, the torch is going to go in the, the top because that's the, the hole it fits in. Now Bradley did say uh, to get stop it from rattling around to wrap it in a bit of insulating tape. So I will um, advise the same. I picked up some some blue while I was in Wilco just to try and make it match the shell. Um, so I'm going to go ahead now and do a little bit of uh, gluing and come back shortly. Yeah. Back. Um, so this aluminium shell is impossible to solder to. So what I've done uh, is I've glued the, the bottom of the spring into there with a little bit of space. And then there's a bit of, I know it looks a mess, uh, but a glue there just to stop it from catching the sides of the shell when it goes in. Uh, the problem I've got is the earth. I cannot solder onto this aluminium for toffee. Um, so I've just run the wire through the keyring hole. It's just a dab of glue gun glue. I need to tidy it up, but dab of glue gun glue on there for now. And then it just literally just that bit of tinned wire just sits there. And then when you screw it together, it just screws on it. Look, I know it's not the best, um, but it does the job. And then we'll be able to wire that onto a, a momentary switch. Here's the plan. So again, I uh, will come back. Okay, so I've just soldered a a switch on it 
Um, what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to have to 3D print some kind of button because that's horrible. But there you go. Um, I will do a test fitting in, into the blaster now and show you shortly. Bear with me. Okay, as you can see, I've, I've just pulled the wire out this front hole for now, but um, yeah, how cool is that? Um, now, Brad said in the vector set, yeah, um, it needs a bit of tape to stop it falling out. Now, I don't think it's going to fall out, it's in pretty solid, uh, but it wiggles up and down. So, again, I, I would double down on what Brad said and let's just put a little bit of insulating tape. Um, I'm going to increase the barrel length, I think, to, to match that, because I think it'll look cooler. Um, and then I'm still trying to work out where I'm going to put the button. I suppose here, down, down there, I don't know. Because um, I want to run this with foregrip because obviously it's huge. Uh, but yeah, pretty cool little project. Um, so again, uh, thank you to Bradley King for pointing these out. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll see some cool ideas from different people. Because I think it's pretty sweet. This is Cherry. Yes. Bye-bye from me, bye-bye from Jerry.